again to today's uh, webinar that is all about telling you and showing you how you can increase your revenue from growing cyber threats. And I'm joined by my colleague, Dane uh, D. Simino, as well as me, Chris Rate, to talk to you about this today. We'll first quickly talk to you about the, the market opportunity, uh, the problem then about unknown files and, and what they present to your customers, <clears throat> but by the same token, the opportunity they present to you to make money by partnering with Komodo. And we'll explain who we are and what our approach is and why we feel our endpoint solutions are the, the best in the market. And then with our exciting partner program, how you can make money with Komodo. So the market's opportunity. Well, no surprise to you. You know, 2014, lots of big data breaches. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. You had uh, Sony breach. You had um, Home Depot and, and others happen. And so the, the public awareness was raised pretty dramatically by all these breaches and how well they were publicized. And in this calendar year, data breaches continued. So in February of this year, we saw the Anthem insurance breach, which had an estimated 80 million records stolen. And then this spring, although it started last year, uh, the news really started to break about the US government's Office of Personnel Management. And just last week, they admitted that now up to 14 million records uh, have been stolen by the hackers. And this was extremely sensitive personal data like social security numbers and, and others. And so what all these highly publicized breaches have done essentially is really elevated the the risk that these massive data breaches pose to an organization in uh, the highest levels the the CEO the board of directors and other C level executives some of the the goings on here uh, as a result of these data breaches the target CEO departed uh, after the CIO actually had resigned prior to the CEO departing now there was also another reason that they had a disastrous Canadian expansion that was part, partly the cause, as well as this breach. So all those things compounded caused that CEO to lose their job. And so the market opportunity is there, and the market size estimates reflect that. This chart by the Radicati Group forecasts the fact that the revenue is going to grow to about $7 billion in a few years. Now, an annual growth rate of 15% in a fairly mature market is impressive. Uh, and this great market growth does mean significant opportunities for your own revenue to increase as long as you partner with the right vendor that can that can address these concerns and security problems. And the problem here is, is this notion of what are called unknown files. Now, a file basically can exist in three states, right? The file on the left is good, it's known to be valid and doesn't but not pose a risk to the endpoint or the organization's network. Uh, it's bad. They know it's bad and must be dealt with accordingly. But the big unknown file risk is that it's not on the, a list of good or bad. It could be safe or it could be malicious. And one key point to keep in mind is that all malware starts as an unknown file. So that's a key thing. Now, what about these unknown files and, and things of, of out there that are potentially malware? Well, do you know there are over four there are four malware samples created per second, according to AV test early this year, and presumably that's that's increased. You know that, and the good question to ask yourselves or, or ask your customers really, is how many unknown files do you have on your network? It's it's impossible to really say. The reason is because what's been used today, a variety of different means, is really failing the unknown file problem. They they do fine for you know detecting what's known like blacklisting can detect about 45% of the malware attacks. This is essentially traditional antivirus, right? They have a list of known malware. Uh, they have a default allow approach. If they don't know that it's malware, they allow it to pass through and into the endpoint where it could potentially infect the system. And remember, it just takes that one unknown file to be malware to infect the host. Another approach has been this reputation system type of thing. It's it's similar to blacklisting, but by and large, you know, it's cloud-based, and it provides a quicker way to update the blacklist. But it still doesn't know about the unknown files. If it doesn't know if that file is good or bad, it can't update the list. Right? It's prone to poisoning, you know, from from outside from malware, and it's dependent as well on that prior detection. So that's failed. External detonation. Well. 
This is a pretty extreme measure, and, and it, what it does is it, it blocks an un, unknown file to conduct an analysis on a remote system. So it's sandboxed, generally up in the cloud. But the real downside of this is that the users are unable to use the file, which could be an application that they need to do their job, until this analysis is done. And who knows? It could be an hour. It could be days. It could be you know several days. So that's a big loss of productivity, and it's a real, I think, uh, sort of disruption to the workflow and, and how companies do business. And that is definitely not desirable. It's also vulnerable to application exploits as well as injections. Now the obvious, uh, opposite side of blacklisting is whitelisting. That you, you know about applications that are good, you put them on a whitelist and you try to approach it that way. Well, same thing. How do you know about these four new malware samples coming out every second? It's impossible to keep up and keep those new malware samples on a whitelist just as it is on a blacklist. And so it's still vulnerable to application exploits and injections, and it does not address unknown malware and unknown files. So still a major problem. So that's the problem out there with unknown files, and that's one of the reasons for the meteor, you know, the, the strong meteoric uh, growth in the uh, endpoint security space. And so Komodo, that's why you're here today to hear, is ex ex really extremely well positioned to address that because we've got what we think is the, the best technology, the best solution out there to address the unknown files program problem. Now, Komodo, who is Komodo? Well, it, we're not a startup. You know, we've been around since 1998. We've got nearly a thousand employees around the world, a lot of engineers in that workforce, lots of technology IP. We'll see the number over 600,000 business customers worldwide. Already uh, 8,000 global partners and affiliates. Uh, Komodo has made its name on the certificates, the SSL certificates side of the business. But we also have over 85 million installations of our consumer PC security suite. And that'll come into play in, in just a moment as I'll explain that, that experience there. We serve more than 20% of the Fortune 1000 and we have that global presence. Now we are the, the number one issuer of business validated certificates, SSL certificates, as you can see from this chart. In March of this year, we became uh, the first, for the first time ever, we became the number one provider, overtook Symantec, which has had the number one market share position for years. This is according from w, you know, w3techs.com. And so we've been able to sustain this momentum and actually grow our market share since March over the spring. So uh, we've got a, a great presence there. A lot of companies know us and trust us on this side of the business. And that's why you know, we think it's a, it's a natural to move over to the enterprise side. Now, our approach then to dealing with this unknown files treatment uh, problem is the runtime automatic threat containment technology that we have. And let's talk about that. So runtime automatic threat containment will auto sandbox an unknown file without blocking the file <clears throat> or delaying the business. You heard me mention a few minutes ago how important it was for the users if they had it trying to get a file into their environment to do their job, they didn't want to have it go off to the cloud for a day or two and be analyzed. They needed it now to do a job that perhaps their manager needed an answer on immediately. So they don't have time to wait. So runtime automatic threat containment also employs a default deny philosophy. You heard me mention how traditional antivirus uses a default allow. It, if it, it'll prevent any file that it recognizes as malware, but that's only 45% of the files. The 55% of the files that it can't recognize, it allows into the system. We don't do that. Any file that we do not recognize, we deny it by default. So the container that we put these files in to be analyzed and to run is very secure and it's also highly compatible. I mentioned a couple of minutes ago with our over 85 million consumer users of Komodo's technology. Well, those users you know, have pretty much battle tested and battle proven our technology in their environments. And I think you'll agree, you know, any consumer environment is a lot more difficult to be compatible in than an enterprise or corporate environment because the consumer environment, you know, IT leverages or exercises no control over that environment. So you've got applications and, and plugins and utilities being installed all over the map. Uh, obviously in the enterprise side where it's more controlled, you don't, but the, the, uh, uh, ability of our container to run and emulate those environments 
by virtue of our experience on that consumer side, puts us above a lot any other vendor really out there. So the the container as well, the piece of software is extremely extremely efficient. It runs with minimal impact on the host system's performance, less than three megabytes of overhead for our environment, and. There are some recent processors that have what are called VT, uh, virtual uh, technology extensions, in the Intel CPU. That if and they were put in there mostly for the you know the VMware and virtual environments. So if they're there, we will take advantage of those hooks or those capabilities for additional security capabilities. But we're not dependent upon those to be present for our software to run. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. So. How uh, RATSI works? Well, you know, it's all about identifying the file. You know, first, every file and executables, whether it comes in from a shared drive, the internet, or USB, or what have you, a network, they're quickly put into th one of three categories, trusted, malicious, or unknown. You can see here, trusted, unknown, or bad files. And then the trusted files are allowed to go into the endpoint. Malicious files, on the right-hand side, go into the Komodo container. And in that container, you can see we're basically replicating the endpoint. We have a CPU, hard disk, and RAM, but those are all virtual. And our container is basically a fully isolated digital container on the endpoint. It's not a removed uh, external system. You know, you're not sending the file out to the cloud for analysis or anything. It's also not a pure virtual machine on your endpoint. Uh, virtual machines, as, as some of you may know, will you know do a, a, a hit on system resources. On high-end servers, blade servers, not as much of an issue, but on a typical, you know, in a desktop or endpoint, four megabyte, four gigabyte of RAM, perhaps, it definitely will have an impact if you try to run multiple virtual machines on that system. And all the unknown files and containment, they're not required to leave the endpoint for that analysis. They're they're allowed to run, and any types of activity that could be uh, you know, malicious, pretension malicious, like maybe trying to bring in all the files from a from a hard disk or a file system and then rewriting them with, and changing them and rewriting them. We'll we'll trap that behavior and we'll prevent it and we'll then know that's a that's a bad file. We also uh, will look at uh, the user experience being seamless. So if you downloaded the application, it immediately goes into the container and you can still run it and and use it. You know, as as you want. And so. Uh, we also will ob observe that behavior, as I mentioned, and record all the activity. It's also possible to upload the file to Komodo Labs for analysis. That could be configured by the system administrator. And in the threat containment side, we also allow instant rollback to a prior state if that is needed. So the Komodo container, as you can see, is extremely, extremely efficient. It's extremely secure, and it's extremely compatible. Now. What we talk about in, in the world out there, we know, you know, it, it's security's been out there on the endpoint for quite some time, and we don't advocate just using a container. We talk about using a layered security approach. So, on the upper left, you can see a, fi a file coming in, say from the internet. Well, they go through the firewall first. You know, that's your first point of defense, first line of defense, right? Uh, if it's allowed in, then they go into the existing systems that might look for anti-malware. Does it match a blacklist? Again, those systems will allow an unknown file to pass through by default. So it goes in, might go into some cloud file intelligence. Known good, maybe, maybe not. If it's still unknown, then it goes right into the Komodo container. And then, it, as we mentioned, it's, it's allowed to run while we continuously uh, monitor and analyze it. So you have numerous ways to deploy our solution. You know, if it's a customer that wants a, a total solution from scratch, the full endpoint security manager. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But you can also deploy the container technology through existing management tools or SIM products as well. So that's possible as a solution to just get the Komodo container capability and coexist with existing tools out there. And we also provide a cloud management server capability as well uh, through Komodo One, our new uh, endpoint uh, system management uh, and desktop security management uh, solution. So let's talk about our solutions then in this realm, because some of you may not be totally familiar with ones here. We've got Komodo Endpoint Security Manager first. Now, ESM, for short, uh, is a, is a battle-proven endpoint security management software solution. Uh, provides these things you hear, like global visibility over endpoints and a very nice uh, management, centralized management console, uh, first-glance notification, 
uh, large number, 34 endpoint operational metrics. We can you know, dive down on those at a, at a later date if you wish. And you can see all the things here, stuff that you would expect for a, a world-class endpoint security system management solution, Mac endpoint support, uh, local database management, centralized um, file management. But it includes this RATC, the Runtime Automatic Threat Containment, which no one else has. And so that leverages what I've mentioned, the seamless user experience to allow you know, them to use an unknown file until it's recognized as a good or a bad file. Those 85 million users that have, have battle proven the compatibility of the RATSI technology, our labs. We also, you know, ESM includes a powerful antivirus and firewall, award-winning firewall, and host intrusion prevention system capability as well. And all, all through an easy, to use centralized management console, right? Now, one thing that we do when we talk about the competition with our solution is on one hand, you know, a lot of customers of yours would probably say, well, how does Komodo compare to Symantec or McAfee or someone like that? And so essentially we don't compare ourselves to those folks because those are all legacy antivirus. What we do is with our new RATSI te technology and our ability to effectively stop all unknown files is we look at two other competitors out in the marketplace, Bromium and Invincia. And so if you compare the Komodo technology with those players, then there's a key one with the against Bromium. And this is what I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, that if the Intel CPU has those VT extensions, then that's what Bromium, for example, relies on. But if they're not there, Bromium will not operate. Invincia doesn't have that problem. Now, we also do not restrict the environment to a known set of applications or files. The other two players do have a very shorter list of the files that they can protect against. Uh, we feel that we provide the best performance out there and that we also, by virtue of the 85 million users that have proven our container, we have the best one there too. And we're the only one that puts all of the unknown files that it finds into a secure container. Uh, we're also not vulnerable to ways that the, the hackers have devised to bypass uh, the security provisions. And a key one here, it's not applicable to us or Invincia, but if those VT extensions are not present, then you, you, the end user or the administrator, get no visible warning that the container is not working uh, again, to protect you against unknown files. You can see how efficient we are and the number of processes in the RAM. And also we support all of the browsers out there compared to the other two. Now, one thing that we did uh, with this solution is, is we priced it at $69 a seat. And that's number one, to reflect the value that our solution brings to the table. And number two, we think to help you on the partners on the profit margin side, quite honestly, you're in this to make money. And so we want to help you in that regard. One of the ways that we're making it very easy and, and, and profitable to do business with Komodo. You can see the pricing that for under 500 users, it is $39. So we did recognize that the smaller uh, portion segment of the market may not be able to, to afford the, the higher price. But then for the larger customers, that's the $69 suggested retail price. And there's a one-time fee per user of $50 per seat uh, for initial setup and, and deployment. So that uh, is is only if, if they use Komodo for it. As a partner, you know our expectation is you would be providing that. And that's the suggested price we've, we've established for the value of providing that service to your customers from your side of the shop. So the other product that we have in our, in our product suite uh, to help protect the desktop is a little bit different, but it's basically taking this whole RATC and container technology that I just described and flipping it around if you bet a bit, if you will. So Komodo Secure Box, you know, it provides a secure environment that will protect an application running in it from being injected, sniffed, or controlled, basically infected by other processes on that system or endpoint. Now, unlike a conventional sandbox where you, you might put uh, you know, something in it and let it run by there, a secure box will treat all outside processes trying to enter as hostile. And it will basically provide a very controlled, tightly controlled, non-modifiable environment in which these critical applications will run totally immune to threats and attacks. And it can be, the whole environment can be rebranded. That's, it's basically, we call it the safest way to interact online. Now, an extremely uh, ideal use case that I'll describe for you here is one of our, our customers that has been evaluating SecureBox and is an extremely 
pleased with the, the technology and, and what will, will allow them to do in their environment. Now, this company, we can't name them, but they have several thousand global agents that are, run, are running their, their specific financial application around the world, they're global agents. Now, these agents are typically independent of this company. And in that regard, they provide their own endpoint, their desktop or, or laptop. Now, that poses a problem because the computing environment then is not controlled by the company. And some of these locations, you know, may not be in the best uh, neighborhoods. Uh, they may not have seasoned operators. They might have part-time teenagers or, or what have you, right, running it. And so potentially, actually highly likely uh, that these are infected with malware. And so the company there for is, was extremely concerned because they need to provide access to their financial transaction applications uh, and the data there that they collect. And this is very sensitive data. So, you know, uh, per PII, personally identifiable information is being exchanged. Very sensitive information is, is being provided and, and transferred. And so what they wanted is a way to ensure that their application uh, would be secure in this potentially hostile environment. And then they would also have to be in compliance and ensure compl compliance with a lot of regulations. And so our solution is the only one that they found. Uh, no other vendor has been able to do this. Uh, it also is nice because it doesn't force them to retrain these end users. The turnover in these, in these locations is, is extremely high. So that's a very costly endeavor for them to think about, having to retrain people all the time and to work in a different way than simply launching a browser and running the application is you know not something they're they're eager to do and, and that's what our our solution allows them to do just that just put it on the desktop as a as a company application launch it run it and they have they have no clue that it's being run in a totally secure environment now one question we do get a lot is so so what how does komodo esm that i just talked about how does that compare to secure box well they both coexist on an endpoint uh, you know esm we feel is the best at preventing malware from infecting an endpoint in the first place. And then Komodo SecureBox is the best at securing an application within the container itself. We know, you know, it's a, the real world out there is that, you know, the other, the endpoint maybe would probably have a um, another vendor, so Symantec or McAfee, you know, endpoint security. And so we know the problems with that. So if that's not changeable, then SecureBox is perfectly positioned to protect the application within the container. And so we feel both security approaches should be employed to secure the endpoint totally. Now, how does SecureBox look competitively? Well, you can see here it does very well. It really has no competition. Uh, it's such a unique application. Some of these other vendors out there, Wontok and, and Quarry, are trying to do that. And Vinci, in a way, you know, has a similar type of, of solution, but it doesn't you know, provide everything, especially like the product customization capability, uh, client identification, as well as validation. And our protection capability is much higher. And we're also much, much lighter weight uh, out there in, in the environment. It's compatible with every application and it supports uh, pretty much, you know, all the major environments out there. So we're going to be rounding that out later this year, uh, completing that. So. That's the second product that we want to talk to you about today. The, the third one that we always have time for today is our anti-spam gateway product. Now, this is part of what we talked about earlier. Remember the layered approach? You want to have protection to gateway and, and others. So this is a true cloud-based uh, email anti-spam solution that brings all the benefits of a SaaS or cloud-based application of lower startup costs, faster startup time, and pay-as-you-go type of, of opportunities. The Komodo anti-spam gateway is extremely well regarded. We've got an extremely high accuracy rate with a very low false positive rate. And uh, we were tested very favorably in Matusek's proactive defense challenge, which is 100%. If you're not familiar with Matusek, they try to replicate a corporate environment as I think better than anyone else out there in terms of real world testing. And they also, you know, an ASG offers outbound email scanning, which can stop your scanner from sending out malware too, which is which is helpful as well. Uh, we also offer an archive capability with it, and we have all the, the Komodo technology, like the RATSI technology in ASG to help protect against and recognize unknown files and things like that. So some of the key benefits there, the gateway level filtering without that dedicated cost of hardware and maintenance, 
helps you deal with that spam before it enters the network. So you've got that layered protection approach. It's got a very powerful and easy to use web-based interface. Uh, it can quarantine, find, and then release something. So it's no need to wait uh, before you, you go to release non-spam from the quarantine. It does use the whitelist blacklist. And, and so it can trap a lot of the, the potential malware. But again, because those types of, of approaches are not you know, ironclad, that's why you, you would want to complement it with the Komodo ESM and the RATSI capabilities as well. And so all the logging and, and archiving is available to you as, uh, in addition to the other features that you saw there. Now, we don't have time today, but we will be doing some additional uh, presentations on these other solutions that are available to you. Uh, we've got Komodo Device Management. That is a cloud-based uh, management solution for endpoint protection. And so that's, uh, we announced that in, in April <clears throat> as a sort of evolution of our mobile device management solution. So the Komodo device management manages both mobile devices as well as endpoints. Komodo Coromail is an on-premise based anti-spam solution. Uh, Komodo Corrigan is a unified threat management. It's an appliance, hardware appliance at the gateway that also can trap a lot and you know, be part of that layered security approach. Komodo MyDLP is our data loss prevention, which protects against you know, data at rest, data in motion, uh, data from leaving an, an organization via webmail or USB key or, or iPhone type of thing. Uh, Komodo One I mentioned, it's a, it's a free service right now with those three components that you see there, the remote monitoring and management, the patch, and the service desk capabilities, very robust capabilities that we are providing. And then we are going to be adding additional functionality to Komodo One in the, you know, over the next few months, uh, you know, pretty significant product capability as well. And then we also offer a Komodo penetration testing service as uh, a service that, that you are, are allowed to resell if you so wish. And then we have lots of other products either out there you know, as well today, many on the consumer side, just so you know, uh, but also other enterprise class products that are under development and will be coming out later this year. We'll, we'll be sure to update you on those as well. So with that, what I'd like to do is turn it over to my colleague, Dane, and let him explain to you how you're able to partner with Komodo and make some money. Here you go, Dane. Thank you, Chris, for that very uh, great overview and a lot of details and a lot of um, Komodo products. Um, I just want to give a brief introduction and overview of the Komodo Partner Secure program to you all. The uh, Komodo Partner Secure program has been designed for our partners to empower them uh, to create ongoing revenue streams to deliver you know, these best-in-class security solutions to, to your customers. Uh, and these solutions include you know, not only the, the three key solutions we talked about today, but again, as Chris just mentioned, all of the other products in our arsenal as well. Um, we also try to get these marketing resources, uh, training, and generous margins out to our partners. And you know, finally, our main goal is to help our partners achieve new levels of success through this program. So joining it is very simple. We have two tiers of membership, authorized and gold. As uh, an authorized member, you have access to product discounts uh, on a portfolio of information security products. <clears throat> you have access to the Partner Secure Portal. You have training access on all the products we mentioned, as well as sales processes, um, an accredited partner logo for your website that you can display that you are a partner of Komodo, and product launch kits to help you get started in any direction. Uh, as a gold partner, you get all of that that I just mentioned, but also a marketing campaign and promotions, uh, support free demos to uh, our product portfolio, pre-sales support access to a remote monitoring and management platform called Komodo One, which Chris touched on earlier, uh, access to deal registration, and finally, um, MDF, or marketing development funds. So on the slide there, you can see that, you know, these tiers, and there's also a set of requirements for each level. Um, on the authorized side, you have product and sales training requirements. Um, we want to make sure that you're capable and, and prepared as possible to enter the market with our solutions. Also accepted terms and conditions. Um, and in addition to this, for gold member members, you have technical staff training, business plan and forecasting, POS reporting. So just with those requirements and you, you receive all of those benefits when joining the Partner Secure program, 
Um, if you do have any other questions, we're happy to you know answer them on a you know one by one basis. We we encourage you to visit our website komodo.com backslash partners. Uh, you can also send us a, a, an email with any general questions at partners.komodo.com. Um, or if you want to speak with someone directly, uh, we encourage you to figure out um, which region you are, either the west or the east, and then you can contact the um, regional contact on the screen there. Colby Carr is the person you want to speak with on the west, and Chris Nicholas for the east. So um, again, uh, if any questions, you send us an email, contact, contact us directly, and I'm going to hand it back over to Chris uh, to close us out. Great. Thanks very much, Ding. And uh, just to, to summarize what we talked about today, uh, no news to you again probably, but again, endpoint security with a 15% with a uh, annual growth rate is a very strong market opportunity for both of us. Uh, to make some money. Uh, there's a that higher awareness of the threat that unknown files pose to an organization uh, entering uh, you know a network or a company's uh, systems through the endpoints and, and beyond just a, a PC you know think mobile devices and you know think of employees being in, in unsecure environments like a coffee shop or the airport or something like that so there's been a reawakened uh, awareness I think about the importance of endpoint security and those market uh, forecast figures bear that out well. And we feel, you know, quite honestly, bar none, we have the best solution to address the market, the RATC, the Runtime Automatic Threat Containment. Again, think about how our default deny philosophy or approach is so different from the other vendors out on the marketplace, like the, the traditional antivirus vendors that only trap about 45% of the unknown files coming into an endpoint. And if they don't trap it, they allow that to go right through and onto the endpoint where it only takes that one potential file, that one potential piece of malware to infect the host and begin the infection, the APT, right, advanced persistent threat, those types of, of uh, malware uh, capabilities that are out there today to really get in and, and wreak havoc on an organization. You heard about our partner program. There's a there's a very experienced team of, of partners, professionals here that have worked with the channel for many, many years, and they've done a great job designing a program that reflects the best of the best, right? Uh, and in some of the, the, the metrics here that you see, we want to be very easy to do business with. That's, that's important, we know, for our partners. But we also know that you're in it to make money, so we want to make you money. And we as a vendor have to as well, but we also want to make you money and make you profitable too. Now what we're also planning to do, you heard Dane mention, if you have an immediate interest and want to get out, find out more information about our solutions, to reach out to Colby or Chris uh, and, and schedule that. But we are planning to do some technical webinars where we do, we'll do a deeper dive into some of the products that you heard us uh, describe here today and show you how the, the RATSI works, for example, and how we can we can accommodate that and, and work very well in a, in a small, you know, four gigabyte system, for example. And so we'll be uh, coming out with some more information for you uh, in, the, in the near future. But again, if you have an, an immediate interest to find out more about Komodo Solutions, reach out to Colby or Chris. So with that, uh, let's just look at the question panel, because I mentioned you know, that's been open to you uh, throughout the, the session here. And uh, there have been a couple of questions posed. Let me, let me check them out. So here's one. So how has Komodo worked with partners previously? You know, we have, uh, let's see. Well, um, Komodo actually, as I mentioned, been around since 1998. And we have a very long history of partnering uh, for revenue with our SSL uh, business uh, partners. And we're looking to basically continue that success and experience uh, as we move over to, to create and build our enterprise channel partner program. So the, the whole experience of, of being partner friendly, that culture and philosophy is already in place at Komodo. And I think that's an important part as, as many of you out there will probably, uh, you know, agree that some vendors out there you know are not partner friendly you know they have a direct sales force and a lot of a lot of channel conflict that's not Komodo's way 
And so we're, we'll be bringing that over. And as I mentioned, a lot of the, the, the folks here that are working and creating the, the Komodo Partner Program have had long years in the channel working with channel partners. So they bring that to the table too. Uh, another question. Um, oh yeah, so in that range, just you know, uh, to remind you that you know we have, do have a, a formal deal registration process, and if you bring us a deal, you get an additional 10% off list. So that's a, a good example of how partner friendly we are. Uh, so the deal registration cap component of that program is very, very much in your favor. Um, so here's another one. As a partner, while I only have access to the th products you talked about today, uh, the answer is no. As a partner, you'll have access to all the Komodo products that we uh, have to offer to our enterprise customers. I, I put a list of others like uh, Corrigan and Coru Mail up there. We didn't have time to talk about those in much detail today, but we will be scheduling another session to introduce those to you as well. And those are available to you uh, to resell. Um, and here, here's one we hear quite a bit, to be honest with you. You know, it's a, the antivirus has been out there for a number of years, so it's basically why, you know, should I convince my Symantec customers to replace their antivirus with Komodo antivirus? Well, you know, quite honestly, as you heard me say, we feel because of our RASI capability within the Komodo ESM uh, solution, we're the best in the business. But that said, we do recognize that many customers are reluctant to change. And so we do make it possible to deploy just the containment or, or RATC capability of ESM initially, uh, sell the customer that, be part of that layered approach, which we do strongly advocate. And then we feel very confident that over time, you know, the customers will, will be very favorably impressed with the Komodo RATC capability and the ability to trap all those unknown files that they should or will consider replacing Symantec with the full Komodo solution. Uh, and we've got other capabilities from the cloud-based side coming that we think will help move them along. But, but again, start with selling the, the Komodo RATC capability to complement their existing AV to show them how they can then be totally ironclad, you know, against unknown files. And how, so one question was how to get a technical demo. Well, that's why um, we're, I think what you want to do right away is to uh, contact Colby or Chris uh, in your respective geographies. Basically, Colby is west of the Mississippi is way, what is the way to think about it, and Chris is east of the Mississippi. So uh, if you're out in those geos and, and want to get some instant information, please uh, call or, or email those two gentlemen, and we'll get you set up as well. All right, I don't think I see any other questions. So I'd like to thank you very much for your time today. And we hope that we will be looking to sign you up as a Komodo partner in the near future. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.